Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to do my first ever player review. We're going to break down a specific card in NHL 21. I've been talking about this for a while. Uh, things I want to touch on just quickly before we get into the video. I think when it comes to doing card reviews or player reviews for NHL, it is far more difficult than any other sports video game. I'll use MLB for an example because MLB content is something I will be making quite a bit of come the launch of, of the show. You get you know, four moments at least of, you know, one-on-one -on -one with that player to showcase that 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 hitter, um, that hitter's ability at the plate. And then you can do a lot of stuff with that and then his base running, all that. It's very one-on-one, -on -one, where in the NHL and in hockey specifically, you get a, you get a specific shift. Um, you know, you might be, you know, hung in your defensive zone and not be able to really highlight that player because you have to switch off and whatnot. So it's very difficult, in my opinion, to do player reviews. And I thought about different ways to actually do it. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm going to break it down in a few different ways. I'm going to break it down into offensive creativity and the ability to create time and space with deking. I'm going to break it down to skating, so speed essentially, and how he feels in terms of his build. And then defensively as well, is he able to bump people off the puck? Is he you know, uh, kind of a force with a stick check? And then finally on offense, is he able to just pick corners? Uh, does his shot feel as powerful as his stats indicate? So today's video, we are going to break down the 98 Jerome Ginla. I got a lot of questions as to why I chose Jerome Ginla. Really not that difficult to understand. He is one of my favorite players. Taves on paper is the card to go after, uh, but it's so minimal in terms of his, you know, the the things that are better on him than a Ginla, so I went with my, one of my favorite players of all time. So let's get into the player view. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. All right, guys, here we go. So the first thing I want to talk about is, first of all, lineup placements. If you get Jerome Ginla, uh, there's a couple things that you can do. Obviously, you can put him at center or you can put him on wing. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I did both, and i much rather have him on the wing. You'll see my stats here. I only play Division One Rivals and Hut Champs, so any card that hovers around a point per game for me is extremely valuable in my opinion. Like it's anyone because I don't play squad battles really at all, so my stats aren't really inflated. So as you see here, he's got 24 points in 26 games, um, and these are all the synergies I've got on him. A lot of these synergies are what you guys are going to have. Gladiator really does nothing for him at all. And then Distributor, in my opinion, is important on this card. It gets his speed to 94. Uh, Spark gets him up to 94 in terms of uh, acceleration. And then everything else is 99. So um, I do play him at center and on the wing in this video. I'm going to highlight both and show his strengths off. But uh, yeah, let's get into the actual gameplay. And we'll start with his offensive ability. All right, so first thing I want to do is just highlight his shot. Obviously, it's 99 across the board, but does it really feel like a 99? There's a lot of cards out there that have really high 90 shooting, especially with right-handed wingers, which is where I start off by playing him. I'm going to highlight this by showing you his first goal on my team. This is just a normal face-off play, but the absolute cannon that this thing has literally just explodes out of the net. Like, that hits the net and flies 800 feet down the other way. Um, the one-timer on a Ginla is absolute money, so uh, that that is a huge check mark in my opinion. All right, so he checks that box off with a slap shot. Let's look at his wrist shot now. Now, there's a few ways to test out a wrist shot in this game. There is one off the rush as well that you can kind of test, and I do it right here, and it's against Mike Smith. And the, the Mike Smith card that I'm facing is only the 85 overall. Isn't that impressive? But what's impressive about this goal is to do it against a really tall goaltender is a little bit more difficult because he fills up the net more. So you have to be that much more precise. And this Jerome Ginla, obviously an absolute weapon with his wrist shot as well. All right, so now let's break down his skating. In this clip here, I get one-on-one -on -one with a silver master icon, Ray Bark, who only has about 91 speed. And even though this card only has 91 to begin with, obviously with the Sherbet, it gets a 94. A lot of people have a feeling that it's not going to play very fast because he's not in the high 90s. I just want to kind of put that conversation to bed because in this clip right here, again, as you'll see, as long as you catch the defenseman flat-footed with this card, you can basically straight line down. That's what I do right here. Uh, and he's got a quick enough movement on the deking, whatever, to go backhand for, or forehand, backhand, but nothing special on that. But I just want to kind of highlight his speed at the top end. If you're straight lining, you're not really going to have much of an issue with this Jerome McGinley. All right, so his top end speed is pretty good, but honestly his agility like l2ing and deeks and things like that felt a little sluggish uh, i found that i wasn't able to protect the puck and and able to quickly do half spins and whatnot with jerome again which is kind of surprising considering he is 99 overall in all of those stats but yeah i just didn't find him to be as crisp as some of the other players again i'll use jack hughes as an example um where i'm able to just do cuts and whatnot with him very very quickly 
just felt a little sluggish with Jerome again. I don't know if that has to do with his weight, um, in as he's a little bit heavier for for a guy that's only six foot. Um, but yeah, just uh, didn't find his his agility to match his stats. So I guess that's one thing um, to look out for in terms of you know this card and how dominant it is. All right, so now let's just talk a little bit about his defense. Now, I'm not going to lie. I didn't enjoy having him at center, and I think that's less to do about how good he is at center because obviously on the draw, he's phenomenal, but I do like left-handed centermen a little bit more. That being said, it's because of Sean Couturier why I don't like him at center as much because the new Couturier, whether it be the 94, any of them obviously that are above 90, they're just so dominant in the middle. I find they're extremely difficult to knock off the puck because he's six foot three. He's more dominant in the defensive zone, able to knock people off the puck in that, you know, that uh, that middle slot area. I liked Aginla on the wing much more because he still has that breakaway speed, even though he's only got 94 overall speed with um, distributor on. I just noticed it a little bit more at center. I just didn't. I felt like you didn't take advantage of him enough because of how good and potent his shot is. Um, so now in the defensive zone, when you have him at wing, those those guys just aren't nearly um, as important. Now when you're up against a defenseman. I didn't notice that he was able to bump a ton of guys off the puck, even with 99 body checking. It wasn't like, um, you know, he wasn't able to overpower anyone. It's more because most defensemen, and that's who the wingers are covering in the defensive zone, are like 6'6 six, six monsters like Hedman, and those guys are just not really going to be able to bump off very well. But on the four check, however, I found that he was able to, when you have a little bit of speed along the boards, he was very, very dominant in that sense um, in terms of the four check. So guys, I've got to give a ranking here. Honestly, overall, even with his little bit of a deficiencies in terms of his agility and ability to make cuts and whatnot, because he's still able to do it, it's just not as crisp as I would expect with a 99 full across the board. I'm going to give him a 9 out of 10. This card is still one of the best, if not, you know, the top few in the game, and it will be for a majority of the season, the rest of the season, until we get them higher over 90 overall players. That being said, is he worth the investment? 100% no, guys. And I'm going to say the same thing about Taves, even though I haven't used him. There is no card, really, that's worth 1.5 or to 2 million coins when you could go out and get a bunch of master items right now that will play just as good, if not better, in some cases. So I will say he is a 9 out of 10, but because of how you obtain this card... Totally not worth the investment, but an extremely fun card to chase. And for anyone that's going to play the game for the rest of the year, I would recommend throwing your cards towards the set as opposed to just selling them immediately anytime you get a new one in a pull. But nonetheless, I really enjoyed it, and I'm glad that one of my favorite players of all time got one of the most dominant cards in NHL 21. So guys, that is going to do it for my first ever player review. Again, let me know what you think in the comments section down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for daily NHL content. Thanks for watching, guys.